Did you know there's now so much plastic waste in our oceans that over a million marine animals die every single year? A couple of years ago, a whale was found on a beach in Spain. It had 29 kilograms of indigestible plastic waste in its stomach. Plastic bags, ropes, nets, a drum. Stories like these can inspire change and action in adults. But for our children, it would give them nightmares. For our children, we need to give them stories of hope to help them be part of the future and to create the change that is so desperately needed. Malati and Isabel Dyson were 12 and 10 when they decided to tackle the huge plastic pollution problem strangling their tropical paradise home of Bali. They'd always had a deep connection to the sea, jungle and mountains of Bali. One day, they're inspired by a lesson they had at Bali's Green School about people who changed the world, like Nelson Mandela and Martin Luther King. They started a campaign to ban plastic bags called Bye Bye Plastic Bags. Over six years, the girls gathered 90,000 signatures on the petition, started a hunger strike, gave a TED Talk in London that's been watched over 1.5 million times, organised Bali's largest ever beach cleanup with 12,000 people across 55 locations and 43 tonnes of waste collected, and worked with an environmental lawyer to constantly campaign the government to ban plastic bags. Finally, in December 2018, Bali announced that single-use plastics, including straws, bags, cups, bottles and cup lids, would be banned from the island by July 2019. Today, Bye Bye Plastics is a global youth-led movement with 45 teams across the world. These two inspiring sisters prove that you're never too young to start creating the world you want to be a part of. Research shows that messages delivered as stories can be up to 22 times more memorable than just facts. It took me a lot longer than Malati and Isabel to start agitating for change. In fact, when I was younger, I used to be a fashion buyer and I'd have new outfits pretty much every single week. I would use plastic products without giving it a second thought. I was eating meat with pretty much every single meal and the list goes on. I was blissfully unaware. But it took seeing an episode of War and Waste to really change things for me and to open my eyes to the waste, the pollution, and who's paying the real price for the way that we consume. I felt so ashamed at my lack of knowledge. But at the same time, then I realized that if I didn't know, then how many other people don't know too? And it just takes having our eyes opened to then be able to start making some of those fundamental shifts and having an influence on those around us too. Starting to make changes is one of the best things that we can do for our children because infants and toddlers are some of the world's best copycats. Who else has had a moment where their toddler has dropped an F-bomb? And keep your hand up if they have also dropped it in public and they've dropped it on a plane and they've dropped it repeatedly through an hour's long flight. If that tells you anything, it shows that little people are parrots. And so it stands to reason that they're also going to parrot the good stuff too. Some small changes that we can make are things like swapping out packaged snacks for whole fruit or cut vegetables, swapping out small flimsy plastic toys for quality wooden toys or borrowing or renting those toys, swapping out purchasing new clothes all the time for shopping pre-loved or sharing them amongst friends. Really small actions can start to make a much bigger difference over time and especially if your child sees you not only doing these things but sometimes you talk them through certain aspects, it, it can be like a light bulb going off for them. For many of us, our day-to-day -day lives are so removed from nature. We buy products in the supermarket with no real idea of all that happened for those products to land on the shelf. We eat that hamburger without realising the vast environmental footprint of meat production, from deforestation to biodiversity lost to land and water degradation. We put money in banks, investments and pensions, 
without realising we could inadvertently be funding things like fossil fuels, arms, deforestation and more. Much of our society is shaped so that we don't easily see these things, so that we feel that consumption must endlessly grow. But you know what? Once you scratch the surface of the devastation we're causing our planet, you can't look away, you can't ignore it, because this is the future we're leaving for our children. One of the best things we can do from the youngest age is help our children to develop a love of nature by playing outdoors, by doing nature play, by spending time with animals. And if you're stuck inside, as we so often seem to be in this crazy year of 2020, there's always incredible children's shows like Our Planet. I think sometimes there can be a misconception that you can only teach children about big concepts like sustainability once they're a bit older. But I'm a big believer that if you help to instill a love of nature and a love of animals really early in their life, it can spark something for them. And I wanted to show you something that my son recently did. And I promise this is not me getting him to do it. This is all of his own volition. And he's four and has just started reception here in London. And this is a picture that he's done of the two last living white rhinos, a mother and a child. And he's written here, help the rhinos straight away. I'm going to make so many rhinoceros daddies because he knows that they need the daddies to end up having the population um, keep on going and thrive. And he's also said to me that he wants to start making cards. He'll draw them and I'll write them apparently. And we'll distribute them to his friends and around the neighborhood because he wants everybody to know about this and to help do something. So I just thought that was quite a good reminder for me that it's, it's never too early to start. As David Attenborough says, what happens next is up to every one of us. What our children learn and do now will have an impact on children that haven't yet been born. Three of the best ways to inspire our children to be little eco-heroes are, firstly, to engage our children through stories about nature and young change makers. Secondly, to role model eco-behaviour, starting with small, imperfectly green steps. And thirdly, build a love of nature through nature play, outdoor activities, and time with animals. It's only fitting that I leave you with some words from Alati Dyson. No matter how old you are or where you come from, you can always lead by example. Don't wait for permission. Don't wait until you're older for someone to make that path for you. Make your own path and go for it.